Hi, Ellen. Hi, how are you? All right, how are you? I'm good, thank you. I'm good. Thank you very much for um, being interested enough to interview me. That's really nice. I'll have a little chat, I guess. So, thank you so much for joining us today. We just want to give recognition to your career as part of the International Women's Day. Um, so right now we're just going to discuss about like your career, the highs and lows and the challenges that you face being a woman in banking. So uh, to start off, do you mind just telling us like what your job role is and like what responsibilities you have? Okay, um, so my current role is, well my title is um, Credit Assurance and Training Manager. Um, I work for a, a private company called Lending Crowd. Um, we provide loans um, for small businesses um, in the UK. And um, my main role is to, um, I guess, to train and accredit people um, that come into our department. So I, I'm mainly focused on, um, we've got two sides to our, our um, department, credit department. We've got blended operations. So i um, We've got a team of about, oh, I don't know, six or something in there. Um, so I've been responsible to help work with the team leaders and getting training plans in place and um, accredit them in each section um, of the process. Um, and then we've got um underwriting team, um, which um, I'm very... I'm mainly in the underwriting team and I do a bit of underwriting as well. So last year I had to go through the accreditation process to just get my underwriting skills back up, up to speed. Um, and um, I work with the underwriters so that they get a delegated lending authority to underwrite their own rules, uh, loans. Um, I also do quality assurance testing um, randomly across the team. And I'm also um, responsible for keeping processes up to date uh, in line with um, any um, credit policy changes or just, um, you know, changes that we think will improve efficiency across our business. So that's, that's my role. <laughs> um, so how long have you been in this role? Or has it been like a trans transition from like different roles? So um, I've been in Lending Crowd for 10 years. I was their first employee and I was hired as an underwriter. But um, as you can imagine, with any business set up, uh, start up, I suppose, that there's not a lot of people there. <laughs> so um, while I was hired as underwriter, um, it, my CV was, it was picked up on my CV that I um, had been a branch manager. So I understood um, a lot of things about how to operate business like budgets and um, had compliance knowledge. You've, you've got to make sure that everybody in your, your branch yeah. follows um, compliance and regulation. Um, also understand customer service um, and, you know, the key things that you need to run a business. So... Um, I started off being probably doing a bit of absolutely everything. And suddenly <laughs> you realise, oh, the, we need to do this. We don't have someone to do that. So you need to go and do it. Um, and then as we've grown as a business um, and took on more staff, um, I did move across to com uh, risk and compliance for a, a couple of years um, because I was money laundering officer as well while I was there and um, then moved back into to credit um, a few years ago where I became credit assurance manager and then decided to make me trainer as well and then dabble about with underwriting. Yeah, well, that, that's a whole step forward and then going back, that seems like a lot. But it seems like you're managing quite well. Yes, I'm still here. <laughs> Um, so how did you get into banking? Like, how did you start off your journey into banking? So my, when I was um, in primary seven, so just before I went to high school, um, 
we were sitting counting money for um, charity. And I thought, oh, I quite like counting money. <laughs> um, I thought, oh, I could go and work in a bank. Um, so when you go to high school and uh, the careers teacher uh, asks you what you want to do, um, I said that I quite fancied working in a bank. So that's automatically written down. Um, and then when they follow up with you. So one of the things that she she said to me was that um, if you go into banking, you'd be able to sit banking exams. So I wasn't I wasn't planning on going to university. So I saw the opportunity of um, doing some exams with a career um, as a, quite a positive thing and a way to to extend my education without um, without having to go to university, I guess. So that became my focus quite early on, um, and the subjects that I picked at school were were sort of around that, like accountancy, economics, um, and then. Coming into my first year, my last year at school, I, I wrote to um, the four main banks, because um, that's all we had back then, <laughs> um, and asked if I if I could have a job, basically. And um, two wrote back, and one offered me an interview quite quickly, um, which was Clydesdale Bank. And um, within a week of leaving school, I, I joined the Clydesdale Bank. So, um, was you said you were a branch manager? Was that also at Clydesdale Bank, or was that a different? Yeah, no, that was at Clydesdale Bank. So, um, I started off as an office junior. I don't know if there's such a position these days because you, you used to go in and you you um you started in a branch, so you would have. I started in quite a big branch. It was well, medium size. It was about twenty staff. And um, you had the opportunity to do lots of different roles, um, which included um, uh, working on the on the cash there from the customers and as a teller, which I loved, absolutely loved. Um, and there was a bit more to it than just sitting there hoping that you balanced at the end of each day. And you know, I eventually became first first teller, so that meant I was in charge of ordering the cash. Um, making up, making sure all the orders were were made up for customers coming in. Um, I don't think it's quite like that these days because <laughs> you have a lot of cash. Um, managing queues, you know, um, customer service. Um, done a lot of that. I also had the opportunity to work on a uh, um, securities and foreign desk. So you were um, busy doing um, legal drafting up legal documents, um, making sure they were registered um, and selling currency and um, buying and selling shares. So um, lots of different skills that you you would pick up. Um, then there was a bit of a restructure in the 90s. They decided um, that banking needed to change and we had to, um, I guess it was driven by a sales culture you know, the more competition. Um, so there was a bit of a restructure. A lot of things were centralised, and um, there were there was a role created called a, a pers personal customer advisor. Um, and basically, it was someone that you would go into the bank and see about loans, savings. Um, that role still exists on a, a smaller scale these days. Um, and and basically look after their needs and, and see what the the customer needed. Um, I would never class myself as a salesperson. Um, I always felt that I was there to help the customer. Um, and if you help your customers and give them good service, then you will be rewarded by um, the outcomes of that and feel really good. Would never sell anybody, well, sell anybody something that they didn't need. Um, so that, when you were in that role, you would deputise for the, man, the 
the branch manager when he was on holiday, um, or when she was on holiday. And um, that gave me a taste of, I would quite like to do that one day. So um, eventually I, I was successful and lucky enough to become a, a branch manager. Oh, <laughs> I love that mentality. You don't really hear much of that these days. Yeah. Um, I, I mean, if you'd asked me when I joined the bank, I suppose a branch manager is a lot different from back in, in my day. Um, a bank manager was a pillar of the community and, you know, um, something much grander. But um, if someone had said to me, would you become a branch manager? I would have said no. Um, you know, I... But as banking evolved and those opportunities opened up, then um, it became natural progression. Yeah. Uh, so what challenges have you faced in your career in banking? Okay. <laughs> so I wouldn't say, I mean, I mean, I've been really lucky. Um, I've had lots of really supportive managers and line managers. Um, they've all helped me to develop. Um, they've all let me um, work on thing, work on my strengths, and 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 give me opportunities that you know that I could. <laughs> they were just there for me to to be able to expand my experience and and stuff. Um. But I, I would guess, I would say my the biggest challenge that I've faced has been probably in the last five, six years. Um, and it's got nothing to do with um, working for, for Lending Crowd as such. Um, one day I was in a meeting and I suddenly realised that I'd forgotten what I wanted to say. My mind just went blank. And I was just like, what's happened? Why have I have suddenly frozen in this room with two other people that I knew really well? Um, and I thought, have I started to become really stupid or um, started to lose confidence in my, my capability of communicating with people? Um, and then about six months later, there was a, an article in um, BBC Breakfast that started to talk about um, the menopause and um, the impact it was having on, on women and one of these things was brain fog and I thought that's what's happened to me it's not that I've become um, incapable of learning or communicating or um, you know out of my depth um, this is a real thing, yeah. you know. Um, and there's been so much more publicity over recent years about women in the workplace and menopause that it's been really, really enlightening. And I would say that that was a huge challenge to me. Um, but once I realised what it was, you were able to deal with it. Um, and I must admit, you know, our our company's been really supportive in that way. So at that time, all the, it was probably a very male-dominated um, uh, company. Um, and it's not now. I think we're, we're probably just as many females, but at that time, but at, at no stage did anyone say to me, what are you talking about? Why, what's wrong with you? Why are you... Why can't yeah. you say what you mean? Um, they were they were really kind. Um, they didn't sort of pick up that I was having these issues. Um, but there was one day I had a, a really bad meltdown um, about something, and I just shared it with a male colleague, and um, he fed back to HR, and um, we've got a, a really magnificent. HR person and she phoned me up and she says and how are you feeling and what's this what's that and she started to give me um a bit more information about 
menopause and how can we support you and um it was really really good and i think you know we're talking about international women's day and about inclusion and um it's just as important that the females um the later part of their career is supported as much as what they are at the start of their career um and i think there's a lot of um men starting to realize that it is a real thing yeah. you know my friend and I were just talking about this the other day. We were told, we were just aware of our, our mums just having these hot flushings and that that was it. Whereas um, there's a lot, lot more to it. I think there's something like about, I can't remember if it's 37 or 47, see that's menopause, um, different symptoms. Uh, you know, and it can be from having aching joints um, to the brain fog to yes, feeling really hot and and overcome emotional and um, and I think um it's really important that that's recognized um so I've I've been I've been lucky but it has been a huge challenge and that's a long long explanation <laughs> to your, your question no, 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 it's oh, fine. Yes. <laughs> no so would you like say that essentially support in situations like that has increased over time Right. We would say like maybe previously it wasn't as, you know, as supported or people didn't know as much about it as they do today. Yeah, most definitely. Most definitely. Um, and, you know, we can be a lot more open about it. Um, you know, there's lo lots of programs in television as well. Um, and I actually changed my manager Um while all this was going on and he actually said to HR so what can I do to support her and she said well, she might find she might feel tired so she might want to go and have a little nap um, <laughs> I was okay I, did, I didn't need to go and have my little nap but I mean just the fact that they were asking what can we do to support and I have been very open um I mean most of it I've been at home working from home <laughs> so it's quite easy but you know um even in the when we were in the office environment, I would be quite open um, about what things were like. Yeah. Uh, so what would you say is your biggest achievement in your career? Well, got a few. <laughs> no, um, you can list them all down. I've got a few. Um, so I guess... Um, you know, I went on to do my exams. Um, mm -hmm. I had um, probably the equivalent of a, 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 a sample membership exams, which is probably now equivalent of the advanced um, diploma. Um, had a lovely day graduating, which was um, really nice. Um, so that that was a massive achievement. Um, but also then to follow that through um it ties in with with like with um what I'm doing now as well but um also to be awarded a fellowship from the institute that that's that's been a real um proud moment and um you know the work that I've been involved with the institute since then you know it's opened up so many um opportunities for starters I'm getting to sit here and and, and speak to you um <laughs> but um taking the leap from main mainstream banking um into a startup business you know with no employees me being first employee I think there was me um, and a tech guy and the CEO sat in the room. Um, to take that leap is certainly one thing that I do not regret. And I would highly recommend it to anyone that has that opportunity if they're in that position to do that. Um, you don't realise when you work for a, a bank um, the skill set that you pick up and the experience that you pick up, um, which I alluded to at the beginning, you know, that um, you saw that I'd been a branch manager, so I've got a bit of commercialism about me, and that was all picked up that, you know, 
that person could work quite well in, in getting this up and running. Um, and within, you know, we had to um, gain FCA permissions to, to operate as a business. It was just, a, we started off as a peer-to-peer -peer lender. Um, that side's sort of winding down a bit more. We've, we've moved more to um, institutional funding um, for our loans. But um, at that time, regulation had just come into that, that sector and um, I had to work um, with our CEO to, um, to get our FCA permissions. And we were proud enough to say that we were the first um, peer to peer business lender to, to achieve that, which was um, fantastic before all the big ones um, had achieved that, like Funding Circle. Um, and then to become a successful, profitable company, you know, that's, that's, I mean, I, I can't, I can't believe what we've been through to get there. Um, lots of great um, people working for us, lots of people that have been able to develop within the company um, and being, everybody is able to, to make changes and, and voice opinions and make suggestions and to have that opportunity in a, a small business um, is incredible. And that's part of, re I've really, really enjoyed being able to, to influence that and share my experience with younger people. Because for a while, I was, I was <laughs> older by far, um, but they've still got a lot of younger people. And um, to be able to share experience and train them and, and develop them um, is incredible. Um, so yeah, that, that's <laughs> my real pinnacle. So um, what advice would you give to younger people that are like just entering banking or like want to start a career in banking? So it's moved on quite a lot. So I, I touched on um, about, um, you know, we, we, we centralised a lot of things and got rid of lots of processes, but we've got challenger banks now, we've got fintechs, We've got um, lots more opportunities. So uh, banking's not just about going serving your customer and, and giving out money or, or providing loans or savings or, or whatever. Um, within financial services, there's lots of different roles. You know, you you've got your you need legal advisors. You need um, you know a lot of accountants coming to to banking so they can do. They focus on risk and compliance. Um, we, you've got tech people. They're really important. Um, and I think um, this isn't directly related into to to what people about the opportunities within in banking. You know, to give you advice. But um, you know, a lot of banks are now working with. Um, tech companies hand in hand so great partnerships going on there um, set yourself a, a goal um, but don't feel that you've got to um, make it that you want to be CEO of a company um, you know everybody's got different goals within their life and at different stages of their life they'll have different needs and and wants so when you're young you're really hungry and you've got plenty of time to develop yourself and you you might say right I want to be um I want to lead that team you know I want to be head of a department um or I want to be head of an area or whatever but there may be a time in your life that you know you maybe have family or you've got extra studies and and you don't have that time in your life you need a bit of stability and security and um, to be able to balance everything um to to not overcommit your life and it's okay to do something that you you're 
you're comfortable with for a period of time before you're ready to, new, to do the next step. So um, don't be frightened to set small goals. Um, and keep yourself open to opportunities. So I started off in retail banking, um, but after branch manager, I moved into um, business credit. My qualifications through my banking exams allowed me to go and do that. Um, and it was recognized that because I had my bank exams, that I would have the skill set to analyze accounts and look at credit applications and, and things like that. And I moved into that role. And the only reason that I left that role was because I was made redundant. So, um, which was a, a tough thing to, to take. But do you know, everybody that's been made redundant, moves on to another role, has found something bigger and better as well. So while the uncertainty of that change um, is, it's difficult at the time. Um, once you get over and accept the change, then you'll also find a, a rewarding opportunity that will um, that will be fine. Um, so yeah, don't don't feel that you have to have these big massive goals unless that's your ultimate aim. <laughs> you really want it. But it's also okay to just take it little step by step, which is pretty much what I I did. Right. Oh, that's that's amazing. <laughs> I think we're all just kind of wanting to get there. We all just want to reach that top goal. So it is nice to hear from someone saying that you don't have to rush to get there, just like little bits at a time. Mm -hmm. Uh, but thank you so much for joining us today. I absolutely love talking to you. It's so nice to hear such a different perspective on banking as well. Oh, thank you very much. And um, I wish you all best in your career. And <laughs> hopefully we'll catch up sometime um, yeah. so I, I can find out how you're getting on. <laughs> no, because, definitely. Um, there's... I, I mean, I, I wouldn't hesitate in recommending financial services to anyone. Yeah. Hey, thank you so much, Helen. Very welcome. Thank you.